Lauren, the fish pet. I operate in Perth, Western Australia. So today I'm just going to show you how to do a water test. Um, a lot of people think that it's something quite magical uh, and people pluck numbers out of nowhere but there is a science and there are charts and things like that. So first thing to test the water is um, get the water, you open it up and then you taste it. Mm. Good, make sure you taste the correct water because this is the water that we're going to be testing. So before we start, uh, we always rinse the jars off um, with the water that you're going to be testing. So next, what we do is we line up the tests that we want to do. So initially here we have um, ammonia. Ammonia is the fish's waste, the first product that the fish produce as waste. Then we have nitrite, which is what the biofilter should convert your ammonia to. Uh, but both of these are toxic, so there's a second set of bacteria that live in your biofilter that converts uh, the nit ammonia to nitrite and from nitrite to nitrate. Uh, that will tell you how well your biofilter is going. And once you have tested that, you can establish whether the biofilter is working properly. Uh, the other test that you would then need to conduct would be your pH test, uh, which is a measure of the acidity of the water. Uh, your alkalinity test, which is also known as KH, and your general hardness, so that's a measure of your calcium and magnesium. Um, and then if they are suffering um, algae problems, uh, then you would then test for phosphate. So now what we're going to do is that different tests require different um, test amounts of solution. So this ammonia um, is 10 mils, nitrite is 5, nitrate is going to be 10 and I guess if you do this um, many times you will actually sort of be able to do it off the top of your head great so I guess um, why I've chosen this uh, water test kit because I know that it's reliable. I like the um, jars in that they can stand upright and then you can pour water in without it toppling over and then you have to start again. Uh, the other thing is that it's got a little com uh, cheat sheet sort of on the bottle. It tells you to fill it to 10 mils and drop six, bottle, uh, six drops of bottle number one. Give it a shake. And it's also easier to shake the wider the bottle is. Three, four, five, six. And give it another shake. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. And then just proceed on with testing the others while you've got time for it to react. So the nitrite is five mils. And we do the nitrate. And with the nitrate, it comes with a powder. So you just put a scoop of this. And I guess the more reliable test kits will have more reagents. Uh, for any particular test. And so now we will move on to the pH, which is just four drops. And the KH test, which is a pretty much a titration method. I've put a little bit too much in here. So basically what we're going to do just against the white here, we're counting the number of drops it takes for the solution to turn back to the color that's coming out of the bottle. So it comes out as orange. That's one, two, three, four. So it's taking four drops. So the alkalinity is going to be four degrees of hardness. And with the general hardness, it's the same thing. It's a titration effect. So you're counting the drops for it to turn back to green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty
so it's a bit orangey there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's about ten or eleven for that. So you'll be jotting this down or making a mental note of it. And with the phosphate test, it's the same as the others. Just shaking in between. Great, so now that we've allowed enough time for the chemical reactions to occur, we can then compare the test solutions uh, to the chart. So if we're looking at these you can see they've got curves so you actually look from above. Um, so there you can see the ammonia is zero which means that um, the biofilter is converting your fish waste from ammonia uh, away from ammonia and if we have a look at the nitrite as well uh, you can see that the biofilter is working properly breaking that down and if we have a look at the nitrite here you can see it's actually at uh, 10 milligrams per liter so uh, that means the fish wastes are being converted to nitrate um, and the husbandry there is very good uh, for this koi pond um, because you don't actually have like this would be the sort of the cutoff mark for a good husbandry uh, anything above 50 is poor husbandry they'll need to do further water changes so the other thing that we test is for pH so if we look over here this pH is sitting at about seven and a half so that's pretty good for koi you'd like to keep them between six and a half to seven and a half um, higher they can tolerate up to eight and a half with no problems uh, and with koi probably down to six is okay but you wouldn't want them to go any lower um, what we tested before was a carbonate hardness or alkalinity which was 4 degrees so that is um, very good as a test for the buffering capacity of the water um, so that would uh, guarantee that your pH does not drop from a normal pH of 7 or, or about that uh, to dangerously low levels of 4.5 or below uh, so the alkalinity is basically a measure of the buffering capacity of the water against uh, pH fluctuations so 4 degrees is quite acceptable, it's quite good. Um, and then the last one we want to test for uh, was phosphate. So this pond owner actually does has concerns over the um, algae problem. They have an algae issue. So algae is normally either high nitrates or high phosphates. Uh, nitrates was at 10 milligrams per liter, so that was actually very good. But if you have a look at the phosphate, we use the 10 mil. Um, and if we look at it from the top, it's actually looking at most likely going to be about five milligrams per liter. So, in order to for this pond for them to um, prevent algae issues, they would need to reduce it to less than two and a half. So, that's something that they can add uh, phosphate uh, binders to the pond, or do more partial water changes, or look into the food that they're feeding the fish maybe um, this might be a low quality or high phosphate type food so there you have it um, water quality testing by Dr. Rich Malone Fish Fed. thank you